This is The Eagle's View, a podcast of Flushing Christian School. Children are valuable, and Christian parents are responsible to raise them to honor Christ. But parenting is a challenge in today's society, especially for those of us living in an urban setting. So, one of our goals as a school is to support you in your calling as a Christian parent. Let's consider life together from The Eagle's View. And welcome back to another episode of The Eagle's View podcast. I'm Andrew Snavely, Development Coordinator, and I'm joined today by two special guests, two young men uh, who are very familiar with FCS, uh, but we're glad that they could join us and share about their experience here as students and beyond. So I'll invite them to introduce themselves and share where they are in their school process, and then we'll go from there. My name is Daniel Cow. I'm currently in high school and in Stuyvesant High School. And I am um, Ryan or NZ Sean, and right now I'm in St. Francis Pre- Preparatory, I'm, and I'm a sophomore. So you guys are both sophomores in high school, and you both graduated from FCS. I'm trying to remember how long you were here at FCS. Ryan, if I'm not mistaken, you were here from earlier. When did you start at FCS? Second grade. Second grade through eighth grade, so many years. Um, And then Daniel, you joined us not second grade. In seventh grade. Seventh grade. So in Daniel's experience, there was just the last two years Mm -hmm. in middle school. But we are really curious to hear how you are doing now in high school and also perhaps how FCS helped prepare you for that. Daniel, why don't you share from your experience? I will start off how it helped me academically. Like for high school, there's, it allowed me to skip some classes like Spanish one, I got to skip into Spanish two and it, uh, FCS curriculum taught us up into the second semester of Spanish two, which is, it made it really easy for me and it really helped me gain a foundation for it. And also for math, it helped me skip algebra one and goes directly into geometry. So the FCS curriculum really helps me like skip classes and have more advanced um, knowledge and that helped prepare me for high school. So Daniel, in your experience at Stuyvesant, obviously we wouldn't say FCS has the same workload that a high school would have or even a specialized high school like Stuyvesant, but would you say that the, the, the quality of the academic teaching and the classes themselves helped prepare you for your experience at Stuyvesant? Yes, it helped me produce good quality work. I try to put my best, my best effort into everything I do. I learned this from FCS and like all our classes, like for example, writing essays or doing projects and stuff like that. It really helped us to one, work as a team, to work with other students, but also to independently give our best effort and put our best, um, put out our best work. You mentioned the essays. I think back to the eighth grade year when you guys worked really hard on your research papers. I'm gonna assume it was really hard. I think the final product showed you did have to put some work into it, but really helping you develop this sermon and and, uh, approaching a controversial topic. um, Has that bled into your experience at Stuyvesant, having to develop that thought process? Mm -hmm. I now, because of that project, I make outlines for everything. Whenever I'm trying to prepare for anything, I make outline. And the outline I made for that final project, it was like, it was enormous. (laughs) Like I have so much stuff and that has continued. And I will speak about it more when we talk about my impact in the club. But in all these things, it helps me organize my thoughts and just be able to produce something that has high quality. That's great. And I guess our ultimate goal as a school is not just to feed you information, but to teach you how to think. And if the outlining process of research paper is is helping you in that direction, then that's that's mission accomplished. Uh, Ryan, you mentioned you're at St. Francis Preparatory Preparatory School. You can correct the pronunciation if you need to. How, How has that experience been for you switching from FCS into that environment? Well, freshman year was pretty enjoyable. It was pretty easy and the classes were, you know, now that I think back on them, very, very easy and stressless classes. I feel like FCS is like the stuff that I learned here was supplementary to, to the things that I would later learn in high school. Like, like in math, I feel like the concepts just clicked. That's great. Yeah. So you would say that your time at FCS helped prepare you for that jump to St. Francis Prep, but it wasn't a jump. Maybe it's more like a just ninth grade. It's the next level up, but not, not overwhelming for you. That's great. And so as much as our school wants to play a role in helping you academically be prepared for high school, our, our, one of our biggest concerns is to help you be prepared spiritually. Um, how can you see God using your time at FCS to prepare you? I think the biggest impact FCS has had on me is just laying a foundation for my faith. 
it really helped me make my faith my own, not just my parents' faith or like regurgitating all the things I've learned and what my church says. It really fa um, rooted me in what I believe and why I believe it. It helps me to realize what do we believe as Christians and why do we believe these things? It teaches me like the morality, like what is right and what is wrong, especially in Bible class. It was, this was one of my favorite classes. It helped us learn how to think. It helped us defend our faith. It helped us realize like what is truth how, and how does it apply to the world? So it really shaped my thinking and my faith and just overall my whole course of life afterwards. I would say the same thing. It, it laid a foundation that would eventually, that I could build on and FCS set me on the path of living that Christian life. It, it gave me the resources that I needed to, well, be reasonable and and reason with my faith. It gave me, it helped me ask questions like why and how that people w wouldn't normally ask of religion. And it's really helpful. And this matches our goal as a school. We, we want to see, we want to understand Christianity, Bible Christianity. It is a moral code. It is character formation, right? Discipline and integrity and respect for others. And ultimately, though, at its core, it is a relationship with God. It is a life characterized by walking with God in prayer because of his son, Jesus Christ, reconciling us to him. So we're not afraid of him as a judge anymore. We love him as a father. And we know that he is directing us and wants to use us in this life. Yeah, throughout my stay at FCS, it really made Christianity alive for me. It made the person of God, all his attributes, who he is alive for me. I got to experience him in a deeper way than just intellectual knowledge, but like a heartfelt experience of God. It has in, instilled in me disciplines that help me form, that help, it has instilled disciplines that help form me. Like it helped help me get, it gave me a love for the word of God. Before I was professing, I was be, saying I was a Christian, but I hadn't picked up the word except in Bible class. But afterwards it helped me actually wanna study the scriptures, to search them and to see what truth lay in them because this is the, our only basis for truth. This is God's letter to us. So it really gave me a love for the scripture. Um, FCS also has instilled a discipline of prayer. I remember in starting every class with prayer and then going to high school and like, what happened? Like, <laughs> like, uh, like my global teacher is not praying, <laughs> but it has kept, helped me to keep on praying. And even though I don't see anything happening, like even though God's will is in mystery and is enshrouded in mystery, like, I still have faith to keep on praying and just trust that God will do something. Amen. And, and that is our ultimate mission. And I'm curious, Ryan, as well, it, attending a Christian school here where, we're, where our goal is to make sure you're strong in your faith. Um, how did that help you and now in this environment where you are at St. Francis Prep? Well, e even though it's a Catholic school, I feel... I feel like there are still challenges with trying to keep with the faith as as there are students as you want to like blend in with everyone else and the culture and peer pressure so there's definitely still challenging that but it's definitely much easier than in a public school with definitely more influences hmm. and maybe daniel you want to speak to that as well yeah from going from fcs to um, cyberson was a huge culture shock like this is a very safe Christian environment with a Christian community and mentors, then you go to a very secular and school. So it's like, and there's a lot of opposition to Christianity. When I have brought up Christianity or I've talked about it, people are just like, they just like look away, or like reject it. <laughs> and, and for a tolerance, like they um, talk about tolerance, but for Christianity, they're often hostile to it. And I imagine they would have that response, especially if they see someone who has a very strong faith and you're speaking very just matter of factly, yeah, I'm a Christian. And so here's how I view this topic or this issue. I can imagine that would be a shutdown for a lot of people. They wouldn't really engage in a conversation, whether it's hostile or just unfamiliar. We, that's not something we discuss. Maybe that's yeah, the case. Yeah, like I feel people now take religion as something that's like uncomfortable. They don't feel like talking about it. It's just, you know, not taken as seriously as it should. And in Queens, you have so many different religions interacting with each other. Um, if you don't have a strong faith, then it, they could easily feel overwhelmed. 
And there's so much pressure from our, our society, which is more like a, a secular, godless worldview. We just live to feel happy or to in, in, entertain ourselves in different ways. Um, religion doesn't really fit in that picture very well because to understand God properly, to, it's to see him as our authority, as the one who establishes the rules, as our moral judge. And we know him as our savior as well because he's come to rescue us from our sin. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that doesn't really jive very well with uh, the modern mentality that people have. Um, I'm going to switch now to the role that you guys are having in, in the schools. So ideally, you're graduating with a strong faith, but then and then owning and claiming that faith in public is a big deal. Another level is trying to um, influence others in the faith and challenge them to consider uh, their own relationship with God. Uh, Daniel, can can you share more about your experience joining the Christian club there at the high school and then and the role that you've been able to play in that? Yeah. One of the things that I valued most about FCS was the community and the ability to have other people, other peers that who also love God and are very devoted to him. So the first thing I did was I looked up to see if there was a Christian club because I really wanted to root myself in a Christian community. So, and then I found Seekers, which is a Christian club. And it's been there for like many decades. It's been established for a, while, a long time. So... I started going to their meetings and I really felt like I belonged there because in the midst of a secular school, it can be lonely sometimes. You can feel like the only one or like the only Christian. And for my grade, I was the only freshman going to this club. So it was even more like there's nobody, you know, I mean, I'm sure I've met other Christians, but there's no one uh, who wanted to like devote themselves as much as the, like to study the Bible or to have worship. So it was like lonely, but also connected me to other Christians who but helped each other up. They built each other up. And we taught, we taught, they taught lessons and then we learned, we studied the Bible. So yeah, that was just a really good experience throughout uh, freshman year. And then um, sophomore year, I started, I applied for a vice president because I was, I was very excited with the idea of teaching these lessons because it very, it interested me and I wanted to, to teach other people, but also just like learn for myself when I'm preparing these lessons. So I applied for it and then I got it. So this year I've been preparing the lessons. I've been organizing the meetings and it's been like a very helpful and uh, helpful process and where I have grown a lot. Hmm. So that means as the vice president of the club, you're, you're one of the main people responsible for giving the lesson. Is this a, a weekly meeting? How often are you guys meeting? It's a weekly meeting. So every, we, every week, week we meet on Tuesday after school and then I prepare a lesson for them. So yeah. And I'm sure this is it's very common, but as much as other people benefit, it's likely you're benefiting more because you're giving all this time to studying the word and trying to help make it match uh, the, the challenges and the struggles that people face in high school. What are some of the, the topics that you've had to study or the passages that you've given attention to? So I started off the year because I wanted to start off on a note that would just dictate the rest of the year how to go. So I talked about holiness and what it meant to be holiness. And I try to for the first few lessons, I try to combine them in like with a single theme. So I talk about holiness and then I talk about love because as we know, like from the great commandment, the two great commands is love your neighbor as yourself and love God, which can be summed up in one word, it's just love. So love is the fulfillment of all the scripture. So I really emphasize that for those first um, lessons. And then later on, I'm trying to focus on how to live as a Christian. Like I focused one on depression and anxiety with the story of Elijah. Because in my school, there's a lot of anxiety, stress, and depression. And I, I was reading one of a uh, newspaper of the school, and it said Simon has like very high rates of stress and anxiety. So I believe it was very like related to our experiences as Stuyvesant students. So I want to empower and encourage Christians to live in this hard school where it can be hard to be a Christian and just hard to be a student. That's so powerful, and it's, it's it must be really fascinating for a, someone to see one of their peers say, hey, I have the answer, or God has the answer for the anxiety that we're all facing. Turn to God. He's the one. That can be a really powerful and uh, compelling message for that in that kind of a setting. Ryan, I think your experience with the Christian Club is a little different because in Daniel's case, it's been around for decades, whereas yours is relatively new. Why don't you kind of walk us through that, that uh, story? So I first got the idea to make the club around like late freshman year because I, w I was talking with Daniel and, you know, he was talking about his experience with the, with the club at his school. 
And I feel like it'd be a good thing to have a little organization where Christians meet up and talk about the Bible and God and just things relating to it. So over the summer, I th thought it over. And then now at, when sophomore year started, I, I went with the plan and created, created the club. So far, well, not many people has come, but, you know, I'm just sowing the seed here and maybe one day it will grow into something greater. Yeah. And so if I want to make sure I understand this then. Because you heard of Daniel's experience at, at Stuyvesant, the Christian club there, the Seekers Club, that kind of gave you the inspiration and the idea to, to start your own club there at, at your school as well. Um, what was the process like of applying for it? Like, is it an official club along with the other clubs in the high school? Yeah. So I just, so the process is basically that I have to talk with the student's activity director and then he'll give it a check if it, it can go through. Is that right? Like it was like a Bible study focus? Yeah, I, I try to do some lessons. Well, I do all my lessons based on the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, touche. So, like, when I first approached the students' activities director, he was actually pretty open to the idea that I create a Bible study club, and I had like zero to no opposition to go going through with this plan, even though it may be a Protestant club in a Catholic environment. Mm -hmm. And if you just say it's a Bible study club, you know, who's going to object to a Bible study? Uh, now, what you study in the Bible is really important <laughs> and that it's inside the Bible and, and not, you know, just church tradition or anything else. It's it's so encouraging to see how God has used you as alumni of our school, trying to live out your faith where you are now. I'm sure there have been some challenges, but overall, I imagine it's a growing experience for you. What would you say are the things you've learned the most from your role here in leadership? Yeah, there's been a lot of challenges especially because this is my first time actually preparing lessons, giving lessons, so just like managing my time and learning how to actually prepare lessons, how to, like I, like I was talking about before, outlines, like how to outline them and how to organize my thoughts. So that was a major challenge that I'm continuing to learn. Like it's an endless learning process. Another thing is just discouragement because a lot of times I could have just maybe two or three people who come up to the meetings and that can be, just discourage me because there isn't as much participation or there's just not that many people. So just... I focus more on the numbers of people rather than like the quality. And this is the thing I've been learning throughout this experience because whether it's three people or eight people, it, as long as I teach the word and it impacts people, that is what matters is I have to focus more on people rather than numbers. So that's what I've been learning throughout this whole experience. You know, thanks for sharing, Daniel. And that's important to consider even within the city. So you have a city of millions of people um, and then a church of a big church would have a couple hundred, you know. That's a drop in the bucket compared to the population around us. So I think that mentality applies on, on, on a high school level, but even just uh, to the entire church organizations who are trying to make an impact. Uh, you want to change the world one life at a time. Maybe you could say, I'm, I'm, I'm just changing one world at a time because each person's life is as valuable as the world. And that can help you to maintain a sense of value and importance even if it's not as many people as you would hope to come yet, right? Uh, Ryan, what about you and your experience of leading and kind of spearheading this? Where, where have you grown? What have you learned from, from your experience so far? Definitely, definitely patience and dealing with discouragement. Like, since it's a relatively new club, like not many people would know about it. And usually I'd get one, around one person coming. And it, it can be pretty discouraging, but like I was talking to Daniel one time, he says to focus on the people instead of the numbers. So that's that really meant a lot and it, it would help me definitely, it would encourage me to run the club better and to continue making better lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if your focus is on, on the quality, people will notice, they'll notice the quality of the lessons and then word will spread. It's not as fast, but I think it's uh, it's longer lasting in that sense. I think I've also learned that it's in the end it's all it's for the glory of God and and even it's best to not cut corners because in the end God gets the glory so we make good lessons to glorify God. Yes, yeah. 
we stand before God. He's the ultimate audience. And we can hope, we can expect him to say, well done, good and faithful servant for a little bit of time here. Um, what can we be praying with you about? Ryan, why don't you share? What can we be praying with you about here as you continue on this this process and just your whole high school career, I suppose? Definitely that um, encouragement in the club and hoping that the club would reach more and more people. And overall in high school, just diligence in doing the work and yeah. Daniel, what about you? For me, it'd be the encouragement of the Christians to faithfully and loudly live out their faith because I've known several Christians and like, they're not as open about their faith. And I'd like to see more Christians open about it, like being sharing the gospel, just sharing their faith and just spreading the kingdom of God in Stuyvesant. So, that, so just the encouragement and the ability of not just my, me and my club, but just like all the Christians in the school to just make a change and bring others to Christ. Well, thank you, men, for, uh, for sharing these ideas. We're encouraged to hear how God is growing you, and uh, we are committed to helping you. And um, even though you graduate from the school, you don't ever leave the family, technically. So we are glad you could stop in and share some of your experience, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you again in the near future. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to The Eagle's View from Flushing Christian School. We are committed to supporting parents as they raise disciples of Christ through sound education from a thoroughly biblical worldview. To learn more, visit flushingchristianschool.org.